Hey, what's up guys? I know, as athletes, you will have probably heard of your lactate thresholds. But I, as a physiotherapist and a running coach, find that most people don't really understand what this means. Although they often sign up for a test, this is not an indication that they know what they are getting tested. So today I wanted to clarify exactly what those lactate thresholds are. So let's go. First, let us understand what those lactate thresholds are. Then we can get to how to use it and how to maximize it in your training regimen. Well, in simple terms, lactate is a byproduct of burning energy in your muscles. Your lactate threshold one or LT1 as commonly referred, this is where your lactate threshold will begin to rise ever so slightly, but most well-trained athletes can maintain this pace for more than three to four hours. And then we have your lactate threshold two or LT2. This is the point where your lactate production and your lactate clearance will match. Any effort beyond this point and you will have a lactate that increases significantly. For most athletes, this is something that they could sustain for 30 to 45 minutes. So this is something that could correlate to your 10K or a sprint triathlon. Okay, so now know what is LT1 and LT2, but why does it matter into your training? You now can design workouts at the proper intensities. And this will give you more efficiency and more benefit of your training. Now, when I have clients coming over to do a test, they will often ask me after the test, okay, we have done the test now, but what is my zone two? Most people training for something endurance wise will ask about their zone two because this is the term they have heard before and they know they should be doing this zone two training. When people are talking about zone two training, they're usually talking about a five zone model. This is commonly used in athletes and coaches. When you're performing a test, you usually have three zones, anything below LT1, anything between LT1 and LT2, and anything above LT2. Your zone two, however, corresponds with anything below LT1, but they will make further distinctions in between the zones if you're using a zone five model. Your LT1 and LT2 are usually measured into a lab setting. This is where you get on the bike or on the treadmill and then you have your regular lactate measurements. Now, you don't need to have an expensive lab testing. You could do this on your own as well. If you know your marathon pace and heart rate, this you can extrapolate to being close to LT1. But depending on how well trained you are, it could also not be the most accurate estimate. Because elite runners, they can actually run a marathon at almost at their LT2, but this is only for the very, very, very elite. Most runners will be very close or on their LT1, and some runners will be somewhere in between. Your 10K, for example, could correspond to your LT2, but also here, it's only just an estimate. Now, how can you incorporate this into your training? Well, you now have two thresholds at which you know how hard your training is going to be. If you use a lot of threshold training, this is a lot of training done just below that LT2 zone. If you're, for instance, using polarized training, this is where you go 80% in a very easy relaxed zone, then you know you should be doing 80% of your training below your LT1. Studies have shown that polarized training can be very effective if done right, because at this intensity, you're getting the most of your training stimulus while also minimizing your recovery time and building fatigue. So how should you be applying this into your own training? Well, this depends on what type of race you are preparing for. But if you're training for shorter races, you should put more focus on training around your LT2. If you are doing longer events, then you should be focusing more on going above and below your LT1 for most of your trainings. Now you should see this as a spectrum and you should be training all areas of your endurance, but this is where you can put that extra focus on and maximize those results. Before you go out and use those LT1s and LT2s into your training, if you found this video helpful, then make sure you like it and subscribe to the channel. 
I will be bringing out a lot more content like this and hopefully give you guys a lot of information that you can use into your training. That's it. I have nothing left to say. Go hop on those running shoes or cycling shoes and go on out onto the road. See you guys in the next one. Bye.